Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome, everybody, to Parapsychology Research and Education. Uh, this year's theme is Survival of Death in Parapsychology. And going forward, we're always going to have a theme. We're very excited about that. We started our live sessions on April 6th. They'll complete on May 19th, which is not too long from now. The enrollment is still up until May 31st, so feel free to invite your friends. Anyone who enrolls before the 31st of May will have access to the materials and PowerPoints until and recordings until at least uh, April of 2020. So we're here with Alejandro Parra, and you see him in the frame. We'll be giving you his biography and his abstract in just a minute. We would first like to have a shout out to Radiant Skies, the artist on 123RF.com, who made the parapsychology wordle that we licensed for our course logo some years back. We'd also like to say thank you to, uh, to Lisa Coley, the president of the Parapsychology Foundation, without whose financial support we might not be able to do this. And this is me, of course. And thank you to Brian Williams, the uh, research director of the Psychical Research Foundation in Albuquerque, who is our intrepid uh, co-moderator for our discussion forums. So let's move forward. So today is Dr. Alejandro Parra. His talk is called Unusual Perceptual Experiences in Hospital Settings and Anomalous Experiences in Nurses. Alejandro Parra is a psychologist and psychotherapist in private practice. He is a senior researcher in psychology at the Universidad Abierta Interamericana at, in Buenos Aires, in wow. Argentina. Para is also the director of the Institute of Paranormal Psychology, and the link is uh, in the description, and served as the president of the Parapsychological Association. He is the author of various books, including Fenomenos Paranormales, Los Poderes de la Mente, and Que es la Sensibilidad Psíquica. Let's go on to his abstract. Today's talk uh, relates to anomalous experiences in nurses. There is a large number of unusual experiences on the parts of doctors, caregivers, and nurses, sometimes in relation to hospitalized patients. However, although such professionals have themselves been witness to inexplicable events, dozens of unexplained experiences, such as visions in people about to die, near-death experiences, or patients who recover suddenly and totally from illnesses after a religious intervention. Nurses themselves have often had their own experiences in a hospital context, such as seeing apparitions, noting significant coincidences, seeing energy fields, lights, or electric shocks around and coming out of a hospitalized patient, observing anomalous behavior in animals, anomalous functioning of equipment or medical instruments, intuitive knowing the nature of the patient's illness or when he or she will die, or having unexpected experiences in intensive care units, neonatal areas, or pediatric or neuropsychiatric service areas. So it looks to be a very interesting presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, now I am very, very proud to to stay here uh, again because Nancy and Carlos Alvarado, uh, they are my old friends in psychology, my supporters in many ways. And uh, first of all, um, this is very important uh, presentation because uh, I'm trying to study a number of uh, unusual perceptual experiences in hospital settings and anomalous experience in nurses. Uh, First of all, I would like to show you um, uh, some landscapes of our our institute. Behind me, we have uh, our the, the first part, my private uh, library here, um, with thousands and thousands of books on paranormal, spiritual, new age, esoteric topics, mainly for psychological topics. I would like to show you some parts of our research center, our library, videos, and many other uh, materials on parapsychological research. And uh, this is the Institute for Paranormal Psychology, now opened in Sunday, <laughs> in usual day. Uh, our institute was, uh, I, I would like to 
uh, tell you some words about our institute uh, before to start my presentation. The institute was established dedicated to the scientific study of paranormal anomalous events and, and experiences and, and experimental research at Buenos Aires, Argentina. The institute has been recognized as an non-governmental organization since 2004, and its focus is now on experimental, clinical, and empirical research, plus the collection and publication of case reports dealing with paranormal anomalous experiences. And this research project was uh, supported by the Society for Psychic Research and mainly Beal Foundation in 2013, I, I think, 13, yes. Um, and we tell this part discussion the, the main activity in our institute, uh, which are our hard work during the last period uh, in terms of educational approaches, publication, library resources and archives and workshops and seminars, a clinical approach of psychic experiences, uh, experimental research, independent site researchers uh, and uh, undergraduate thesis on site related topics and books and publishing projects and uh, macro PK research conducted here in our institute and a spontaneous PK research. First of all, um, I do not remember any time in my life in which uh, mystery um, in terms of uh, the unconventional, the marginal to scientific knowledge was not of interest to me. I started to get into parapsychologists in the mid 80s approximately. Uh, in the past, Argentina had made great progress in parapsychology, placing itself, according to John Bellof, I remember, as the second country in the Americas after USA with antecedents in experimental uh, psychic research. Um, the most important things in, in our research, I would like to show you um, I, I, I would like to give you um, brief words uh, as an introduction. The, the hospital and, and clinics, uh, sanatoriums, nursing homes, uh, pediatric wards, even ambulances, and other health center can become a breeding ground for the occurrence of uh, unexplained events. Also, many unusual experience have been reported by doctors, nurses, and cleaning and surveillance personnel, sometimes in relation to hospital sized uh, patients, but at other times simply uh, the witnesses of ex unexplained uh, events. Very little efforts have been made to quantify or organize the narrative of these events in a, in a rigorous and detailed uh, manner. Experiences such as seeing dying patients, having visions of near-death experience or, or near-death or out-of-body experiences, or watching patients recover suddenly and totally of, from illness after religious interventions, for example, prayers, or prayers groups, and something like this is very common in hospitals, uh, are events which many nurses have uh, witnesses. At, at other times, it is uh, the, the nurses themselves who have had such experiences in a hospital context, whether in terms of apparitions, significant coincidences, uh, seeing energy fields, lights, or electric shocks around, or when leaving uh, hospital patients, observing the anomalous behaviors of animals, uh, for example, cat, birds, flies, and so on. Not the science, the anomalous functionings of medical equipment or instruments, intuitively known uh, uh, patients, illnesses, or when he or she will die, or um, having experiences under special treatment conditions, such as uh, in an intensive therapy units, operation rooms, neonatology areas, or pediatric or neuropsychiatric uh, hospitals. Uh, finally, other nurses who 
who have not had any such experience or their own report having here um, reliable uh, people uh, about this their uh, own surprising events. Also, the accounts of this and other experiences might be attributable uh, to fantasies or fabrication of a board or a stressed nursing staff, perhaps as an uh, escape bubble to channel tensions of a grilling work day of complaining patients, bad tempered doctors, or stressed working conditions. Most professionals do not uh, believe that these experiences are either strange or supernatural. For example, we live almost daily with these testimonies. Often even doctors are surprised, but most common is the rule to say, okay, see, hear, and shut up, <laughs> uh, said Claudia, one of the nurses inter uh, interviewed. Um, one of the, um, currently with palliative care on the medical agenda of attention is being paid to issues related to the pain management, uh, palliative sedation, and euthanasia. This is a big step. However, um, dying is a very personal process that is determined by religious beliefs spiritual convictions, personal experience, and cultural background. And, uh, well, my, my, my presentation here does not attempt to romanticize death or deny suffering. There is suffering, and death can be pain, very painful. Often there is a battle on the deathbed, and dying may be a great upheaval for loved one, as well as the person encountering that. When can you deny or conceal the feelings of pain after the loss of a loved one? And what hospice caregivers can touch us uh, is how to develop our sensitivity in order to recognize this that bad experience will uh, remain in calm when our loved ones are dying. Also, I have had uh, collected hundreds of experience, uh, exceptional human experiences through, through my research in parapsychology. And the idea of interviewing nurses and collecting their particular experience began with a graduate thesis written by Paola Jimenez Amarilla and undergraduate student, and also a nurse whom I encourage to conduct a large number of interviews with colleagues in a hospital in the founders of Buenos Aires province. When we discussed the methodology of their research, we decided to carry out a study on the remixed qualitative and quantitative design, whose uh, objective was initially to carry out a survey to describe the types of anomalous experience occurring in the hospital settings accompanied by the psychological measures to evaluate the people's propensity to hallucinations, their uh, absorption capacity, concentration on task, and their work uh, stress. The results were so revealing that after my student was graduated successfully, I continued to expand the, um, the study using other psychological measures and, uh, for example, scatotypy prone and empathy, for example. And in addition, I interviewed those in registered nursing and professional caregivers uh, through social networks in the internet, advertising on the site of our Institute for Paranormal Psychology, and contact with nurses, uh, nursing students, and head of service in hospital, nursing homes, and clinics in Buenos Aires. The networks of contact that resulted led to an astonishing number of testimonies from nurses, patients, and relatives of patients, as well as, as hospital authorities, many of whom were, were uh, very kind when volunteering to connect me uh, with um, 
uh, with uh, the impact of prayers and meditation and reducing stress and the use of a spiritual practice to combat depression, we also examine, for example, religious conversion as a means of reduc reducing addictions and mystical experiences and indicator of mental health as uh, opposed to psychotic symptoms where uh, mental health, well-being and subjectivity allow us to understand how and why spiritual practice and belief systems can be a bridge to uh, the psychological transformation of the terminal patients and uh, training programs in psychology, psychiatry and um, psychotherapeutic practice have seldom, if ever, included religious or spiritual issues. And the most mental health professionals receive no education in this or a specific knowledge related to religious or spiritual matters during their training. And even most psychotherapists have a little interest in the area, deliberately avoid the subject of religion or address, uh, addresses uh, based on the little experiences. So, um, well, this is my, my, my first part of our introduction of the topic. And I would like to show you, uh, and I tell you, share with you, a number of, of experience. I, I want to read some of them. We have collected a number, hundreds and hundreds of experience um, coming from uh, many, many nurses and our team who worked with me uh, collect a number of experience, very, very impressive. I would like to show you some kind of experiences, very interesting. Let me show you. Sorry. Yes. Well, th this is uh, one kind of experience. I'd like to show you some uh, experience who received in, in our database. For example, the nurse accounts was uh, in, in that case uh, apparitions. One of the nurse, um, okay, uh, one of the nurse tell us I, I was working on the night shift where I was in charge of two babies in the intermediate uh, intermediate care at uh, 3 a.m. when I had finished taking care of the babies on the other side of the living glass of the unit, I noticed that, that a woman dressed in white was heading towards one of the babies that was under treatment with life therapy. The mother of that baby was hospitalized in the same hospital for post cesarean septicemia. And the mother had died just at 3 a.m., but I did not know that uh, at the time. Other experience, very impressive, was the following. Um, at night, working in the operating rooms by myself, I noticed that uh, the stretches kept changing place. I would rearrange them and leave, but when I returned, you know, to later, they were out of place again. The lights went on by themselves and the oxygen steps opened. I thought I hear banging on the door and went out to see who it was, but there was no one. Often I hear cries uh, of voices that called me, but when I want to see, there was nobody. Also, I heard noises of doors that were moving, drawers that were opening and closing. Sense, for example, this is a um, uh, very uh, diversity of experience. For example, a patient suffering from a glioblastoma multiform, cerebral uh, damage, and used to use a, a perfume, uh, Fahrenheit, and mix it with a deodorant as a mixture prepared by a family member. The patient was confined at home, uh, and I took care of him when he was hospitalized 
And my experience happened one Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I was uh, held asleep in my house. I suddenly I began to perceive the smell of the patient in such an intense way, as if I, as if he himself were there. I was a product um, of, of of my imagination. Uh, I, I thought, but the aroma was very, very, very trending. When I arrived, I realized that at the same moment that I had the smell it, the patient had died exactly 9 a.m. I think it was like warning. <laughs> Other accounts, uh, um, second case apparitions in that case, once when my partner and I were alone, we felt something cold running through our bodies for a few seconds. The next night, a child died. It's a quite common. We do not even consider it something paranormal. Uh, I have heard about mothers who say that they uh, don't want to occupy the certain room uh, because there is a man who look at them. Um, there are children as well who tell us that they do not want to sleep in a spe specific room, often because shadow observes them behind the medica medication apparatus, for example. Even the doctor once confessed to me that while she was sleeping, she awoke abruptly and saw a dark male shadow of the food of her bed. Other experience, for example, is related to psi dreams or paranormal dreams or maybe uh, spiritual dreams and something like this. In the, in the, in the um, world of the dreams, uh, exotic dreams or paranormal dreams like Stan Krippner, we, we tell that. Um, in the case of nurses, uh, on one occasion, um, I had a dream about a patient whom uh, I had attended in a home for elderly, uh, and I had a very special connection with that patient. This is a very, very uh, impressive, and we pay attention because many nurses not only can experience in the context of the hospital, uh, but outside the hospital uh, as well. In that case, I had, uh, she told us, um, I had attended in a home uh, of the elderly. I had a very special connection with that uh, patient. In the dream, she asked, me, she asked me to visit her and her house. Also in the dreams, I attended her and her house, just as I did uh, in the home, and the patient died. Uh, much later, I was learned from a family member um, in which cemetery her body was buried. When I uh, when I visit the grave, the place where she was buried look at exactly that the same as the place, and I have visit in my dream. Very very impressive dream. Other kind of nurse accounts is related with the dead bed experience. For example, in a nursing home, I had uh, I attend a relatively young patient of about 50 years until his death. He has a tumor in his kidney that has metastasized to various parts of his body. He knew that he was gravely ill and had little time to live. He was in a room with the windows from where he could see the park around the building and there were two trees there. One night he said he saw one of his three closest friends who had already died before him and leaning on one of the trees calling him insistently. And uh, on the third night after that I learned that the patient has died. 
Uh, this is very, very impressive. This photography there um, is um, this photography. For example, you see the vapor or this uh, image in the picture. Well, this is a, um, a uh, catch from a nurse who take a picture uh, during uh, working sessions in, in the hospital. One kind of uh, um, experience, very, very impressive, is the buffers effect. The buffer effect is, um, for, for example, in, in, in the nursing home room of an elderly patient who right arm was mobilized, the call button rang insistently. This is a very, very common experience in, in many uh, nursing homes, hospitals, and, and some places. His left arm, where uh, serum had been injected, was also immobilized. Therefore, they could not have moved either of his arms to press the button. When my partner pushed the cold button away from his bed to prevent him or someone else even thought he was alone in the room from pressing it, but it still rang one uh, once more, the next day the patient died, but the bottom was still raining, even though there was no one in that room. It did not have any technical defect, although we did have it checked and it worked perfectly well. Two experiences more. This is very, very interesting. For example, in terms of um, um, clouds, and vapors, and this kind of things. An extremely obese patients in the um, uh, unit, uh, therapy unit, uh, die after an attempt to revive her, and, and uh, revive her failed. The doctor declared her dead uh, since nothing more could be done. My boss and I stayed with her body uh, to remove some blood serum and send it to the morgue. And suddenly, we both saw that a vaporous white cloud escaping from the area of the abdomen was quietly moving upwards. We were amazed since we had never seen anything like this. Other experience um, is about um, apparitions in that uh, in that way. For example, I was with my companions when he, we all heard it, someone else um, calling me uh, by my name and with marked insistence and urgency. Apparently, from the top floor, it was a young and feminine voice. Surprising, uh, I hurried up the stairs, but checking room by room, I found all the patients was sleepily sounding. Yet the unsettling voice kept calling me, uh, in, unable to figure out what was happening, I decided to return to my classmates. While descending the stairs, I came across a white and vaporous human, future, uh, human figure um, that came out of the dining room then entered one of the rooms. I followed her steps, but found nothing there except the silence. What, what um, one of the really strange experience in hospital settings is related with, for example, animals. You know, animals is usually um, to use in uh, therapeutic matters, uh, such as, for example, horse uh, therapies and uh, uh, using dogs, for example, with kids and some kinds in the hospital with um, parks. Uh, there are many, many cats, for example. It's very, very funny to see that. And uh, uh, in that case, um, one nurse, uh, Tell us this kind of experience, very, very, very impressive. There was a cat that provided 
in the hospital park and often walk through the windows in the, the rooms. Some patients feed, uh, feed it uh, through the windows, for example. One night, the cat was very insistent about entering the room of Mary, uh, Trachius Tommy said patients. Although I threw it um, out, the cat insisted again and again um, on entering through the window. The next day, I learned that the patient had had a cardiorespiratory arrest and died. Often, when the cat visited the room, um, you had to see where it was because it went right to the area where the most serious patients were staying, uh, some of whom were terminally ill. The cat, the, the cat had the habit of circling around the patient, which seemed to indicate that someone was going to die. Uh, for example, there was Ruda, uh, a patient who had had a car accident and was in a vegetative state. The cat was hanging around the windows of her room and the patient, a few minutes later, passed away. Well, what is the background in terms of this kind of experience we have? It's very, very um, incredible experience in that way. First of all, existence reports of anomalous paranormal experience, we call as AP, uh, anomalous paranormal experience by nurses and doctors consists of, for example, apparitions, coincidences, deathbed visions, and others anomalous uh, phenomena, um, sometimes in relation with patients. Visions involved the apparition of death relatives who have uh, come to help patients and residents through the dying process, providing, for example, comfort to them and their relatives. Coincidence are experienced by someone emotionally close to the dying person, um, but physically distant, who is someone uh, somehow aware of their moment of death or says the person visits them and the chain, uh, that time to say goodbye, uh, again providing comfort. Others describe seeing a light associated with the feel of, of compassion and love. Other phenomena include a change of room temperature, clocks stopping synchronistically, uh, account of vapors, mist, and shapes around the body at death, and birds of animals appearing and then disappearing. Some experience uh, may include, uh, for example, coincidence around the time of death involving the dying person appearing to the relative or close fr friend uh, who is not present at the time of death or a need to settle on finished business, such as uh, reconciling with strange family members of putting affairs in order before death. This is a very, very common experience. And we collect a number of experience um, from the nurses, doctors, the carings, the people, and many others, uh, and inclusive uh, people close to me. And more recent anecdotal accounts from the nurses and, and doctors suggest that this kind of experience, the APIS, the anomalous paranormal experience in, spirit, in um, hospital context, consists of a much wide, uh, wider range of phenomena than purely uh, deathbed visions. They may uh, include coincidence around the child of death involving the dying person appearing to a relative or close friends uh, who is not present at the child of death or a need to settle unfinished business such as uh, reconciling with the strange family members of putting a fair in order before to die. And um, one of the uh, 
impressive things. Many people now die in hospitals where, unfortunately, nurses have either the time uh, nor the training to deal adequately with this very important aspect of the dying and grieving process. One of the problems associated, associated psychological um, variables, however, there are numerous studies that suggest possible correlations between occupational state stress in nursing and proneness to hallucination and absorption as a variable that could uh, modulate the stress and as a, a hallucination uh, problem. For example, um, Himhoff in 1996 point out that since death is not taught as a medical subject and dying right is not part of the medical status, this special awareness of the dying process is often ignored by those who care for their dying. Thus, coincidence that occur around the time that of death involving the appearance of dying person to a close relative or friend who is not physical present may be missed. For example, Connor, uh, a nurse in Australia, for example, can do research with care nurses suggesting that they find this kind of experience uh, neither rare or, or surprising, which our re own research has found corroborated even among palliative care professionals. One of the problems associated with uh, such experience by nurses is that uh, there are no other studies about possible associated psychological variables, given that professionals in mental health have the power to define experiences as symptoms of illness, the views and experiences of nurses would appear to be particularly important. However, there are um, numerous studies that suggest possible correlation between occupational stress in nursing and prominence to hallucination and absorption as variables that could modulate the stress and hallucination proneness. Let me show you um, this, this topic uh, in terms of, um, for example, uh, Milhan and Easton, uh, two physicians in the United States, observed of prevalence of auditory hallucination nurses in mental health. For example, 84% of the 54 experienced nurses who returned the questionnaire describing having experience that may uh, be described as auditory hallucination. However, the studies have demonstrated the existence of hallucination in the general population, but we found no study that had examined the uh, prevalence of auditory hallucination in mental health nurses, who are the workers who most often have contact with people who hear voice. Other variables, for example, is the work stress. Another variable uh, potentially related to anomalous paranormal experience in nurse could be the job of stress. For example, stress is usually defined from a demand perception response perspective, and the transition to several distress is likely to be most detrimental for nurses, closely linked to staff uh, absenteeism, uh, poor staff retention, and ill health. Nursing provides a wide range of potential workplace stressors as it is a profession requiring a high level of skill, teamwork in a variety of situations, provision of 24 hours delivery of care, and input of what is often referred to as emotional labor. Um, for example, a, a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, French, for example, identified nine subscales of workplace stressors that might impact on nurses. One of them is dealing with that, of, of course, dying patients and their families. In fact, um, nurses provide an ample, a, a wide range of uh, potential workplace stressors as it's uh, a profession requiring a high level of skill Team works in a variety of situations, um, provision of uh, two, four 
hour, um, 24 hours delivery of care and, and input of what is often referred to as emotional labor. Uh, and not surprisingly, not, not, uh, not, not is, uh, surprisingly for us, there is evidence linking hallucinatory and stressful hypotheses of this kind of experience, at least as uh, part of that. Other uh, um, variables involved and in our study was the main predictor of this kind of uh, experience in, among the nursing world is the absorption. The absorption uh, involves the, the capacity to focus attention exclusively on some object, including mental imagery or a state of uh, heightness, uh, heightened imaginative involvement in which an individual's attentional capabilities are focused in one behavioral domain. A third variable of interest in the context is uh, the concentration of this kind of variables, um, which is the capacity to focus attention exclusively on some object, including mental imagery, to the exclusion of distracting events, it refers to the state, uh, hangman's um, imaginative uh, involvement in which an individual attentional capabilities are focused in one behavioral domain. I, I insist, often the, uh, to the exclusion of explicit uh, information processing in other, or other domains. Uh, a capacity of uh, for uh, observation by itself may not be sufficient uh, perhaps people must also have a motivation or need um, uh, for the experience of observation as well as uh, a situation suitable for inducing workplace stressors such as a hospital setting. The trait of observation is a predisposing factor for uh, hallucinatory uh, experience but they found signs indicating a common self hallucinatory experiential base, suggesting that absorption can indeed serve as a predisposing factor for this kind of experience. The second one, a part of observation, is the empathy. The empathy, it refers to an affective response more appropriate to someone else's situation that to one's own. Uh, two related human abilities, for example, mental perspective taking, for example, cognitive empathy, and vicarious sharing of motion, for example, emotional empathy. And some studies note that the empathy uh, in emotional interaction with patients enhanced the nurse's job satisfaction and the possible association between empathy and nurse fatigue, hunger, and, and inclusive uh, depression, for example. The importance of empathy in nursing context is related to a core of uh, common aims and purpose, and there is a general support that nurses' empathic attitude is very, very important for patient adherence to treatment. However, there has been no research yet which has focused on the possible relationship between empathy and anomalous experience for nursing. Uh, in a previous study conducted by me, I found the anomalous experience, uh, not the nurses, general population, was score higher in empathy than non-experience. Thus, people claiming such psychic experience seems to have a greater capacity, capacity to, to organize the motion of another such as the healing practitioners and our vision and promotion and uh, promotional uh, experiences and so on. Well, what is the aims of hypothesis of our study in terms to, um, to gain better comprehension of this kind of experience in the hospital setting? I would like to focus on the aims uh, and, and, and hypothesis in our study uh, before to follow to, uh, 
um, show you a, a lot of experience I, I would like to uh, share with you. Um, for example, the, the main hypothesis and the uh, and the, the the objectives of this kind of research, uh, however, I should to say, one of the limitation in an attempt to understand such experience from nurses is that there had been little research adopting a quantitative approach focusing on the possible relationship between this anomalous experience and aspects of the personality, for example, empathy and cognitive and perceptual variables. For example, um, schizotypia. Schizotypia uh, has, has been uh, defined as a multifactorial personality construct aspect of which uh, appear to be a continuum with psychosis. For example, positive schizotypia has an intuitive association with religious and spiritual beliefs and experience. However, this does not necessarily um, have any psychopathological implication for the individual. People who see auras, auras, for example, see the energy around the body, might simply uh, be sensitive to anomalous experience, uh, anomalous perceptual experiences. One of the concepts we designed of this kind of uh, research is uh, I called sensitive nursing profile. Uh, I, I would like to um, tell us what specifically is this uh, uh, profile, uh, at least in the terms of nursing activity. And however, the higher level of cognitive perceptual psychotypy scoring individuals who claim being able to spontaneously uh, see the aura or energy field of a person which suggests that underlying dissociative process such as absorption and fantasy proneness are associated. Uh, however, also paranormal experiences are not correlated with negative symptoms of schizotypy, right? It's not correlated with negative symptoms of schizotypy, substantially are lower than in positive symptoms, at least in nursing, nurses. And the present study represents utilizing a large number of Argentinian nurses from a wide range of hospitals in health centers in Buenos Aires. Um, fortunately, for example, in Spain and Mexico, uh, two researchers are trying to do a replication of my own study, it's very, very proud, uh, in order to find the, the same thing in, in, others, in other regions. Uh, so the main uh, aims are, in the first place, to determine frequency and percentage of anomalous experience from nurses across the multiple hospital and health centers. And second, second one, to correlate such experience not only with work stress and absorption as the variables, but uh, with two additional variables, such as, for example, positive, in that case, initial experience and cognitive disorganization and negative of schizotypy, uh, for example, anhedonia or, or impulsivity uh, and the cognitive emotional uh, empathy as well. And the hypothesis in this study uh, was, for example, uh, are that news report anomalous experience will uh, score higher on work stress, schizotypy proneness, absorption and empathy compared with those who do not report that experience. Secondly, in terms of participants, we uh, a total of 450 questionnaires were sent to nurses from uh, 36 different hospitals and health service departments. Of these 344, approximately 76% disabled questionnaire were returned and the nurse participants were recruited uh, with the cooperation of their um, research and teaching areas of the nursing department of each the principal nursing officers and they gave us uh, permissions to administer the set of questionnaires uh, which were distributed 
uh, through the nursing uh, officers to the, each nurse in the hospital, depending on the nurse of, uh, nurses was working in each hospital and health center. Approximately, mean was uh, uh, 100, ranked 5 to uh, 300 uh, per hospital, nurses per hospital, approximately. And uh, the, nurse, the, the nursing officers explained verbally the research to each nurse for both shift. Uh, for example, um, uh, in the morning, and the evening, and the night, or morning and night, and so on. <clears throat> and the nursing officers were also contacted uh, through announcement in hospital and the internet. Uh, briefing the main aims of the research and many nurses interested in spiritual paranormal topics who contact in turn to their officers in each hospital, some of who uh, also showed interest in, in, in the topic. It's very, very funny <laughs> accounts in terms to find the main, the principal uh, or, or the officers in the nursing, what kind of that? Pattern all the events. I want to uh, tell you a number of things uh, that happened to me. It's very, very funny uh, to trying to access. Um, for example, in one of the uh, things uh, in terms to get uh, approbation or the consent forms uh, to interview many, many uh, nursing. We depend from the Ministry of the Central Health in, in, in Buenos Aires, the administrators, uh, or, or to uh, trying to uh, analyze the consent form in terms of uh, we uh, we change the name, for example, paranormal for spiritual and this kind of things in order to obtain the permissions to answer, to interview the nurses. But what's very, very funny, the in, in, examined inside of the research project. And uh, some uh, nurses, uh, approximately 80, were also recruited from courses and, and seminars through nursing schools and uh, health center seminars where the questionnaire were complete in the classroom settings with the permission of their teachers and directors, so on. Um, we used uh, a categorization procedures, and, and the following criteria was used to split the same the sample into two groups. For example, nurses who indicated uh, one time and or multiple times of at least uh, one of the thirteen incidents were categorized as the group, for example, uh, with, with um, nurse experiences, uh, A and E, for example, uh, 200, 235, and nurses who indicated never in all items were categorized as a control group in the same hospital in order to compare uh, this kind of things. Um, Eight items of the anomalous experiences in nurse and health worker survey. This is the name of the of this worker survey. Were used to create an index or count or uh, total of experience. That is, nurses uh, who nurses as um, anomalous experiences themselves, but nurses as um, listeners uh, of experiences from patients and other nurses were excluded, right? Five items, I think. Let me show you. She's my mother. She's coming. She's not a Parisian, just is my mother. Hi, mom. Very good, sorry. <laughs> Well, let me show you eight kittens of anomalous uh, experiences in nurse 
Eight agents of the survey were used to create an index or count or uh, total of experience that these nurses as anomalous experiences themselves, but nurses as listener of experience from patients at, and uh, other nurses were excluded, right? First of all, the nurses group, nurse experiences, nurse, um, the sample consists of 235 nurses, from which 78% are females and, uh, and, and uh, 22 are males. The age range was approximately uh, 19 to 68 years, 40 main, um, 40 years the mean. And nurses carried uh, a mean of uh, 11 years in their work in hospitals from uh, for example, which uh, 39 uh, of them operated in the morning shift, 51 in the afternoon shift, and 45 in the night shift, the majority in night. And the main areas surveyed were rooms, guard, uh, intensive care, pneumatology, and others, for example, ambulances, and so on. I have a very impressive experience in, in that case. And the nurse control, for example, the same consisted of uh, 109 uh, nurses from which uh, 89 are females and 20 are males. The range is the same of the experiencers. And the uh, nurses scored a mean of nine years in their works, uh, from which 21 of them operated in the morning shift, 16 in the afternoon shift, and 27 in the night shift. And the main areas were the rooms, ward, intensive care, neonatology, and, and many others. And, and some of them were identified by the respondents uh, and indefinited by the respondents, for example, 11% approximately. Well, the instrument used, for example, was uh, anomalous experience in nurse and health worker surveys. This is a self-report which has 13 um, yes, no items, uh, items of anomalous or spiritual experience during hospitalization, such as, for example, sense of presence and or apparitions, uh, floating lights or luminescence, hearing strength noises, voices or dialogues, uh, crying or mourning, uh, seeing energy fields, lights or electric shots around or out of um, patients and so on. Other indications may include, for example, having a head extrasensory experience or malfunction of equipment or medical instrument in certain patients or uh, a spiritual form of interventions. For example, uh, prior groups is very, very common in, in, in Argentina and many other uh, hospitals around the world. Um, for example, to use um, some kind of uh, Therapy, spiritual therapy or, or companion on um, prior groups around the bed on the patients, for example, lying hands, uh, right um, image being blessed, and this kind of things. Um, the survey also evaluates, for example, age, length of service, shift, morning, afternoon, and night, uh, hospital area. Uh, and email and phone was optional, of course. The question can also split into two types. The type one, uh, again, nurses has listeners to the anomalous experience from patients, uh, for example, near death or uh, out of body experience, and other trustable nurses. And uh, the type number two, nurses has experiences uh, themselves of um, anomalous uh, experience. The second one questionnaire we used was the Maslach Burnout Inventory. This is a worldwide and well-known uh, um, questionnaire to measure laboral stress, working stress, 
it is a 22 self report which uh, has uh, ranked from zero never to six very often and it measure um specifically emotional exhaustions um, that specifically measures or feeling of being emotionally overextended and exhausted by one's work depersonalizations measure for example um, and feeling and impersonal response for a recipients of one's service care treatment or instructions and finally personal accomplishments uh, measure or um, feelings or competence and successful achievements in one's works the second the third one is the telegram absorbing scale uh, Carlos Alvarado knows uh, well very well this uh, this measure the telegram absorption scales it is uh, 34 each in self report inventory each item of which requires a true or false response the absorption address six general factors uh, for example responsiveness to engage in stimuli and synesthesia enhancing cognitions oblivious or dissociative involvement vivid reminiscence uh, and enhanced awareness um one of the um, the absorption activity for for example creation of opportunity for absorption activities and how easy it was for the respondent to do so um, for example uh, capacity of engaging in this kind of experiences and um, we use uh, the Argentine Spanish version and the fourth one is the Oxford Liverpool inventory of feelings and experience revised um, This is a very um, important questionnaire. It is a um, 150 items questionnaire. We use a reduced versions with a yes no response in terms of basically four dimensions. In that case, positive skytotypy, which addressed uh, unusual experience and community dissociation. For example, the tens tendency for faults to become derailed, disorganized, and tangent tangential. Uh, folk disorders and so on and the negative SkyTTP uh, SkyTTP in terms of uh, uh, to have uh, some kind of uh, uh, anomalous perception or uh, hallucinations uh, uh, or um, some kind of minor disorganization cognitive disorganization and finally, the last questionnaire was the empathy. I don't know if empathy. No, 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 no empathy in, in that PowerPoint presentation. But anyway, I would like to talk about this kind of uh, variable because it's very important. The interpersonal reactivity index, the empathy measures. This is a, a 33 item self report uh contain four sub scales two of cognitive empathy and other two uh, emotional empathy the first two are perspective the perspective taking on emotional comprehension which aims to measure the tendency to try to find out and uh, understand how another individual is feeling at a specific point in time and the second to our empathic concerns and positive empathy uh, emotional empathy and uh, the scores on both the scales are combined to obtain a total score such uh, that high total score implied high empathy and we have the spanish version here with the uh, highest uh, Cronbach alpha confiability and and so on um well let me show you the final results in the table table one the percentage of nurses who report anomalous experience in that way this is very uh, interesting um, because 
one of the most common anomalous experiences report under uh, type number two, in that case, as, as experiencers, are the sense of presence uh, or apparitions, for example, hearing strange noises, uh, voices or dialogues, uh, crying or complaining, for example. Uh, no, the, this is intuitively an, another under type number one as listeners of experience of their patients such as the near-death experience, religious interventions, and anomalous experience in relation with children, for example. Patients admitted to my clinic have reported near-death experience or similar during hospitalization or during clinical intervention, 25%. Uh, Patients in, in my health center have report out-of-body experience uh, this is a low uh, percentage, just nine, a bit more. Uh, during intensive therapy, I witnessed events of the kind of a sense of presence and apparitions, floating lights or luminescence or unexplained movement of object. 28% is a high number. In my clinic, I witness uh, events such as hearing the strange noises, voices or dialogues, and so on, 27%. In my clinic, I had the experience of seeing energy fields, lights, or shocked around or coming from a, a specialized of the patients, uh, six, approximately five, six percent. And patients admitted to my clinic have report extrasensory experiences for example, knowing things about people or situation that could not know because they were interned or, or isolated, seven, uh, seven, eight percent. Um, Or for, for example, I have had a strange experience such as knowing about the situation or a patient I had seen in my clinic while being at home or no, or, or on vacation, for example, 13%. In my clinic, I have had the experience of seeing medical equipment uh, failing consistently, uh, consistent, consistently with certain patients while not with others, uh, 8%. In my clinic, I observed that after um, some form of intervention, for example, by a ropes, lying on the hands, uh, other objects, um, some patients recover quickly and completely from disease or a trauma, 20%. I have had the experience of knowing intuitively what is wrong with the patient just by seeing him, her, or even before, or even without knowing, uh, knowing his her medical history, 20%. Uh, I had an experience that could be defined or as mystical or special connection in the context of my clinic, uh, seven or eight percent. I have here of uh, or meet uh, trustable peers who had uh, witnesses experiences like the ones above in the medical context only, 30%, this is the highest. And in my clinic, I will I uh, witnesses unexplained in advance in relationship with children, especially in the pediatric uh, context, for example, 12%. And if you have, um, according to our uh, first hypothesis, uh, nurses with experience were expected to score higher than uh, nurses control on work stress. Well, this uh, was not confirmed they with uh, uh, score higher on this personalization. The um, hypothesis number two was confirmed that this, the nurses reporting this experience and that to report graded observation, including the six factors that non-experiencers are, 
and uh, nurses reporting anomalous experience tend to report proneness to ICI-CDPN, uh, both negative and positive, that non experiences with emphasis on the unusual experience, which confirm the hypothesis number three. And in relation with, um, to empathy, the hypothesis number four was not confirmed. However, nurses reporting anomalous experience tends marginally to report higher scores of empathy than non experiencers. We have a lot of um, information in the correlations uh, between like KTTP, empathy, work stress, and absorptions for experiences, for example, in the um, 344 nurses who report experience, uh, a number of correlation was carried out between, for example, empathy, um, in that case, uh, for example, empathy, SKTTP, empathy, absorption and work stress among nurses with anomalous experience and uncontrolled also. And the matrix showed that 13 of to uh, 28 uh, correlations were experienced to have high scores on absorption tend to have higher capacity for uh, first one, the positive and negative SKTTP, and the total score, uh, cognitive empathy, and total score, but not emotional empathy. Well, Our conclusions in terms to to have a to get a better comprehension of this kind of experience is, is very impressive because the present study with um, multiple uh, hospitals, for example, showed that uh, of uh, 344 nurses surveyed, approximately 20, um, 12 to um, 28 percent of them report having had at least one anomalous experience in the hospital settings. The most common anomalous experience report as experiencers uh, are sense of the presence or apparition, hearing strange noises, uh, crying or complaining, and know the disease intuitively, for example, and as a listener of experiencing uh, of their patients or peers, uh, such as uh, near-death experience, religious intervention, and anomalous experience in relation to children. Um, unlike our of the first, uh, first study, which was not significant, the nurse here tended to score higher than non-experiences then depersonalization, for example, a factor of work stress, one of the main differential traits. Uh, however, it is uh, difficult to conclude if some kind of depersonalization is also a trait related um, uh, with uh, anomalous experience being defini uh, defined as an unfeeling and impersonal response uh, thorough recipients of one's service, care, treatment, or instruction, which it does not involve a perceptual trait. Nursing reporting this experience tended to report greatest proneness to ice case a positive and negative, with emphasis on unusual experience, which confirmed the results of our previous study on the high hallucination proneness on nurses. However, the present study in implicates an interaction between SKTTP factors in predicting the subjective quality of anomalous experience in nurses. Consistent with previous research presents results will also indicate a potential adaptive and indeed protective role for the anomalous experience. The results further suggest that the quality of anomalous experience as adaptive or detrimental may be influenced by both uh, positive and negative as KTTP, a relationship apparently moderated by the participants' degree of cognitive disorganization, which is current 
with depersonalization factor observed in the experience of nurses. So um, a possible theoretical model that seems to emerge from the present results in that chip, it seems to be functional despite or perhaps even in part because of his or her anomalous experiences, positive chip is reflecting other perception uh, and or anomalous experience may be related um, to subjective anomalous experience and beliefs. Nursing reporting these experiences are tended to report a higher score of empathy with emphasis on cognitive and emotional comprehension in relation with their patients in comparison with the non-experiences. Probably nursing with strong religious beliefs, for example, 20% prior intervention, displayed higher empathy levels in relation with near-death experience, for example, or out-of-body experience. Um, of patients uh, as a listeners, uh, nursing as a listeners during hospitalization or during clinical intervention, for example, during surgery. These findings is partially supported in the literature with some studies demonstrating a relationship uh, between, um, in that case, um, demonstrating a, a relationship between religios uh, religiosity and empathy and probably showing stronger relationship between nursing empathy, the anomaly, our previous study, nurse reporting such experiences tend to report greater psychological observation. The state of absorption uh, could be associated with a focal object of attention, even if imagery, as it becomes totally real to the experiencer. In the present study, however, capacity of, uh, for absorption appears to be only one of a constellation of related factors. Absorption in nurses may indicate a more habitual use of a uh, recurrent desire to engage in absorbent mental activity, such uh, that habitually poor reality monitoring becoming an enduring aspect of one's cognitive state. Well, um, this is very impressive because nurses who have anomalous experience need not mean that all experiences are pure hallucinatory fantasies produced by work stress. It's not demonstrated here, which could not be confirmed here since some could still be potentially veridical if other possibilities are considered such as uh, consciousness being non-local then there would be nothing paranormal about this experience the fact that nurses are empathic or score highly on absorption and proponents to a sky to GP may be what facilities them uh, being more aware of anomalous experience rather than causing them. Um, for example, apparitional and other apparitions like experiences are related to higher levels of report of absorption and imaginative fantasy experience in Argentine uh, undergraduate students and paranormal believers, psychic clements, and indicating that visions of ghosts may be related to cognitive process involving fantasy and uh, cognitive perceptual absorption, which are correlated uh, with each other. In the in the first study, uh, significant difference in, in absorption and anomalous experience for nurses on the night shift were found. This is very impressive data because uh, which could indicate that certain anomalous experience need lower noise in perceptual terms and that absorption could be a variable that is sensitive to certain anomalous experience such as seeing apparitions or, or hearing voices. Probably uh, 
future studies will be conducted in addition introducing uh, for example a qualitative approach to explore the nursing experience um, uh, in terms of uh, for example uh, introducing a qualitative approach to explore the nurses experiences mainly reflecting on the influence of this experience on the care of dying patients and their families and friends and to contribute to the limited news and literature topic in Argentina in in other part of the world. Okay, this is uh, my first part of my presentation. The second part is following to uh, tell you a lot of um, experience uh, cases accounts we have it's very very impressive in terms to uh, have a, a lot of experience for example um let, this is a, a recent uh, book published in united states on this kind of experience the spanish version is this one this is the spanish version El último abrazo de despedida, experiencias paranormales en enfermeras. The English version is the last farewell embrace, spiritually near the experience and other extraordinary events among nurses. It's available from Nova, from a publisher, in, uh, New Yorker publishers. Uh, very, very interesting books. And we try to um, collect a number of cases and uh, show you uh, a lot of uh, paranormal experience in terms to uh, understand better what is the meaning of this kind of experience the last farewell embrace is um, a, a short book with seven chapters i'd like to show you um one some of the main chapters uh, who deal, for example, the spiritual health in nursing practice, for example, the spiritually and the spiritual health and distinguishing the spiritually from religions and spiritually religion and health. This is very important topics in terms to, uh, uh, to have to get a better comprehension, understand better what is the meaning of the spirituality, religion and health in the nursing world. And the, the chapter two, uh, I, I remember, is uh, when the end is only the beginning. <laughs> the extraordinary experience of serving palliative care, the first observation in the history, um, the physical phenomena, was uh, one of the most uh, impressive things in terms to uh, history is the work Carlos Alvarado remember very well, the work of Carlos Osis and Errol Haraldson who uh, conduct in the 60-62, I remember, um, with uh, doctors and nurses, but mainly uh, doctors. We conduct a uh, study with, with nurses specifically. And, uh, well, in this chapter, we, uh, uh, we um, focus on the first observation in the history from the spiritualism uh, period and up, up, up to date, uh, physical phenomena uh, and experience in palliative care nurses, the impact of experiences of nurses, uh, the difficulty to communicate an experience and experience related to death and visions in the death, uh, in the death bed. The chapter number three uh, is around, yes, non synchrony yes, Osses Haraldson, 1961 published, uh, supported by the Parapsychology Foundation, very well. Um, the, the chapter number three is the transformative experience of the sensitive nursing. Um, uh, this chapter is divided into uh, three or four parts. L let me talk about the, this this chapter it's very very interesting because uh, we try to uh, design a profile of sensitive nursing in that way um, 
let me remember what this this chapter in the book Yes, the, the transformative uh, experience of a sensitive nurses, the, the, the result of the survey that I show you, uh, um, and the nurses received reports from source, uh, four sources, uh, other nursing college, um, uh, family members of, of patients and doctors, and eventually uh, administrators of the hospital or the nursing home. Uh, the experience can range from the near death experience, out of body experience in adult uh, patients, the elderly and even ch children, uh, to nurses being witnesses to such events, uh, sensation of presence and apparitions, hearing the strange noises, uh, recovering by religious interventions and this kind of things. Uh, the chapter four is uh, the, the, the title of the chapter is Windows to Beyond the Dreams and Visions of the End of Life uh, that presents uh, the anomalous uh, end of life experience. Uh, nurses often hear about dreams of the, their terminal patients because they have a, an impact on their preparation for death. The dreams and visions of the end of life are described as an existential phenomena associated with a strong spiritual connection and sensitivity. However, also these events are interpreted as a religious experience or spiritual encounter or visits. They are considered emotionally significant, even the, in the absence of spiritual connotations, as they can include a comforting presence while patients prepare for for the photo Patient may have dreams or um, visions that use on prepare for the, the farewell. Um, patient may have dreams or visions that use on the fears that they cannot launch or do whatever they felt they need to achieve in their lives. Uh, accounts from nurses, suggests that this experience cover a much broader spectrum of paranormal phenomena than just that bad hallucination. And indeed, this phenomena may allow for a better transit toward other realities. Well, uh, well chapter five is experience and the end of the life in nurses' home, uh, the caregivers' histories, near death experience and other events. Uh, chapter seven, uh, spiritual vision of the dying, um, and uh, the chapter eight, death and dying, palliative care and spirituality. This is uh, uh, a guide for uh, palliative uh, doctors uh, or uh, palliative medicines and doctors and nurses who work in that um, possibility to working together, uh, including the spiritual. Uh, not only paranormal, but a spiritual approach on the uh, nursing activity. Well, thank you very much for hearing me and to share this uh, presentation. My, as you know, <laughs> my second language, uh, English is my second language. My first language is Spanish. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Merci. <laughs> and well, I'm uh, open to uh, answer questions and many others comments thank you thank you very much thank you alejandro thank you. Uh, it was very interesting presentation as always i'm scrolling up some questions have already come in uh folks can you put your questions and comments in the chat now um let me scroll up um adelson was your question answered yeah. He was he was uh one of our uh, one of our um attendees was asking about the difference between the control group and the other group. Um and I think that was in the slideshow actually. Yeah. Um Padraig is saying um well let me let me wait until you go back to that slide and you can talk about the difference between the control and the experimental group. And I'll take a look for other questions. Yeah. 
nurse group. Uh, what kind of difference uh, you mean? Um, I, I don't know the, if the question is about the main trait or the main characteristics of of uh, both groups. Um, well, nurses' experiences. Uh, to, 135 nurses uh, who have experience and control nurses, um, 109. This is the main characteristic of two groups. Uh, nurse control was uh, the group who has not report uh, any other experience, no experience, zero. <laughs> uh, and the nurse experiences is Divided, it's split into two uh, groups. In that case, the nursing who has uh, listened and the other groups witnesses of this kind of experience. I think. Right. So, so basically, the the control groups are people who are, as the slide says, non-experiencers. Exactly. Folks who yeah, folks who don't have the experience. Yeah. Um, I, I'm working backwards up the up the chat. Um, uh, um, so so if I'm out of order with the questions, please uh, forgive me. Uh, Adelson is saying I don't understand the figures. The sample, the pro, the total sample is approximately 345 nurses, from which 235 nurses are in the experiencer group. Um, uh, therefore, shouldn't you have reported that 235 nurses, approximately 66% of the total sample had unusual experiences? Why would you say that the higher percentage obtain, obtained was 30%? I think this is a confusion between um, the separation of uh, into experimental and control and then the data that you're relating later about... Um, the kinds of experiences that people got from each of these two different uh, groups. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't, uh, you have report that 235 nurses, approximately 66%. Yes. And um, the initial experience, but why did you? Well, uh, the, the, the most, uh, okay. Um, I have, uh, yes, I, I have, uh, no, no, what is, yes, well, we have, um, not of the exper nurse experiencers but anyway i have in that case 200 235 nurses uh from which uh, okay it's divided into gender uh gender and this is the total yeah th this is right approximately 66 yeah of the total sample uh, and the other group is approximately 33%. This is this is right. We focus on the nurse experiences in terms of uh, not the total, but um, the most important things is um, experience um, eaten per eaten, right? This is the eaten per eaten uh, mm -hmm. percentage and uh, not specifically uh, the um, the total number of experiencers and not experiences right because it's very if not it's very confusing to uh, group of, uh, or to split um, two grace groups because we have uh, two main um, Two main groups in that, uh, for example, let me show you. This is the most important for us in terms to 
understand uh, the two different groups because the eight items uh, of the anomalous uh, experiences survey were used to create an index or count of total uh, of experiences that is nurses as anomalous experiencers themselves uh, but nurses as listeners of experience from patients and other nurses uh, were excluded just five bit, five items i think Um, okay, uh, one, uh, Margaret has just asked, I wonder if the nurses who had experiences inside of, uh, inside their, uh, hospital setting, did they also have experiences outside? Did you ask them about experiences in their own lives? Mm -hmm. What is the question? Can I read the question specifically? Um, uh, the question is, is I wonder if nurses had experiences outside of the hospital. And I, I, I'm thinking that this means, Margaret can correct me, I'm thinking that this means experiences of their own, psychic experiences of their own, maybe not related to their hospital work, because you did uh, men mention the other kind. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember now. Uh... Was there a question like that in the? Um, the question is, uh, I, I do the think. do the nurses who have anomalous experiences in the hospital also have nom anomalous experiences outside of the hospital? Yes, yeah, outside probably is 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 a minor percentage. Uh, the most. Uh, let me show you. Probably, uh, yeah, 30% of, 30% uh, uh, um, nurses outside of the hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is. Now, now, did they, um, okay, met Rintus uh, experiences in a, okay. Did they, uh, did you ask them about experiences, other types of experiences in their own lives that were not related to the hospital? Or their patients. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Esther is asking: Have you ever heard stories about dying persons having bedside visions of relatives while looking at and speaking with a staff member? Mm -hmm. So that would be, I would think, let's say there's two. What is, what, what is the, the, the question? Uh, uh, have you ever, uh, did you get uh, experiences in which the nurse and another staff member were in the room when the dying person was having bedside visions of relatives? Uh-huh. So the dying person is reporting an apparition or behaving as if they're seeing an apparition, but the nurse is not alone in the room as an observer. It's the nurse and another staff member or someone else in the room when the when this experience happens. So more than one uh, perceiver, basically. Yes. Uh, oh. Nancy, can, can you show me the that one was way up um you'd have to look for you you'd have to look for the round e on the chat and scroll way up there um it's not so far up uh, if you scroll up it's esther coat and the there's an e in a circle and she just says have you ever heard stories about dying persons having bedside visions of relatives uh, while looking at and speaking with a staff member. So Esther, did you mean, oh, oh, okay. Esther has uh, said the apparition is embodying the staff member. That's interesting. 
Do you have an experience like that? That's that's an uh, Esther. Uh, do you are you thinking of a particular experience, Esther? That's pretty unusual. That's very interesting. I I don't know exactly because I have a lot of experience in terms of a re relative. I, we we have a, a lot of experience who affect your relatives and and many other people. For example, uh, let me show you. Um, one of the most serious affect the, for example, people who has um, uh, uh, testified um, some kinds of uh, paranormal events. Uh, for example, let me show you. I'm trying to find some experience, but I kind of to see that oh i see what esther is saying that um while accompanying a dying person uh, she would see and talk to her mother every time she, the dying person would look at me so Esther's in the room with the dying person and the dying person would look at Esther, but then start talking as if she was talking to her deceased mother. I think that's interesting because um, I've had an experience similar to that related to my mother, where I thought I saw an apparition of her while Carlos and I were on the street. But um, when I turned back to look at the person that I thought was the apparition, it was a different person. So it was as if, as if I saw her, but then implanted, you know, kind of put my mother's face or aspect onto that uh, perception of this other person. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I, I, I remember uh, a lot of experience about that. For example, direct visual experience are possibly the most impressive, not only because they tend to seem as real as physically seen on other people, but because they are often shared by two or three simultaneous witnesses in full light, uh, which is far different from the phantasmagoria of the popular stories and, and folklore. In one instance, two hospital nurses were watching over the intensive care unit uh, both walked down the hallway that led the room, I don't remember, 15 or 16, on the sixth floor of the hospital, when they uh, described seeing a young male who was looking at us, uh, but we only saw his face on another occasion uh, with the same nurse. A patient told us that he had being visited by a blonde nurse, unknown to, to him, who took his blood pressure and auscultated him, uh, but shift, there were not nurse other than the two of us. For oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, for example, other history, uh, similar hospital experience follow. In, in checking the hospital, uh, the operating rooms of a sector one, when I entered through the door exclusively for patients, uh, I saw a nurse dressed in her white uniform heading towards sector two of the operating room. I thought it was weird uh, and written in the experience, right? <laughs> when I went, uh, back to the same door i saw that the lights were off i uh, uh, I, I went through all the operating rooms on the floor and asked several nurses if they had been there but no one except me had entered before um sites particularly prone to the occurrence of these episodes are in addition to operating rooms the intensive care unit of hospitals um occasionally nurses report episodes in corridors or waiting rooms but hospitals um, intensive care 
seems to be a more productive source of vivid apparitional experience. This is very interesting because not only depend from the perceptual sensitivity or um, cognitive uh, uh, approach to study this kind of experience, sometimes you can to think that some kinds of uh, maybe informations, energy, pregnant or, or, or in, in, in pregnancy or something like this in the hospitals indeed maybe produce this kind of visions. We don't know. Um, it's very, very interesting because, uh, for example, I, I remember um, uh, one experience, a vivid operational experience. Um, I, I want to read this experience. This uh, it's follow. As my partner and I were crossing the corridor, one uh, we felt that something cold had crossed our body for a few seconds. The next day at night, a child died. She maintained that it is quite common. We do not even consider it paranormal. This is a very interesting because uh, many nursing, uh, ma ma many nurses. Uh, things that this kind of experience are not paranormal, uh, but they are spiritual in some kind. Um, the, the paranormal maybe is uh, uh, is a bad term to define uh, experience because this kind of experience are indeed normal, not paranormal in terms of ghost or uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, paranormal activity in the in the cinematography or something like this for example uh, i remember nancy uh, other nancy a nurse from a clinic in buenos aires province recall an experience that happens uh, 18 years earlier uh, she said uh, one night we were in a room with two beds where there was no one, so we went to bed and went to sleep. Also, my companion continued to sleep. I woke up and saw clearly an old man sitting on the edge of the bed where my companion was. The first thing I did was close my eyes and pray until, uh, until the old man disappeared. I felt very scared. Uh, another nurse uh, and the hospital, Felicia, I remember, in the South of Buenos Aires narrated a predominantly visual experience with the patient with whom she and her college, who also witnesses um, the experience, had a close emotional bond. Uh, the experience was, uh, I, I can read, um, two or three days after uh, the death of a patient who had had a painful terminal illness, we were sitting in the nurse office, occupied in the administrative task with another nurse. My partner went to the bathroom and uh, after returning said, if you go to look, you will see what is happening. When I went to the bathroom, I saw the patients. He was standing in the bathroom door where there was no need to, li to light as he was clearly visible. I was shocked and left the room. We turned on the lights and went back together. At the moment, the lights in the nursing procedure sector, uh, sector began to blink. Mm. The vision lasted uh, only a few minutes, uh, then it disappeared. <laughs> and our skin bristled <laughs> when we remembered that this episode because it happened to us both together. Uh, this kind of uh, shared um, experience is very common um, in, uh, 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 among very uh, among the, the nurses in, in the hospital setting. Not only one nurse, but sometimes uh, share it with other uh, nurses in the same floor, for example. Yeah, that, uh, it's interesting. Um, there's a couple of things that you said that were interesting. One is that how normal these experiences are and how the people who are in a situation where they have these experiences frequently don't see them as paranormal. They see them as uh, normal. 
discipline of their everyday existence. Julie Beischel was making a similar point about after death communications as well. Um, it's also interesting that there are uh, what we used to call collective apparitions, basically experiences in which two or more individuals had essentially the same experience. And these kinds of multiple observer experiences show up in all kinds of categories of uh, phenomena that our group uh, tends to look at. But I think it's really important to emphasize that these are normal activities and it's basically the philosophical position of scientists and scholars today that renders them because there's certainly so many of these experiences, so many people have these experiences that it's a little, um, uh, it doesn't make sense to call them non-normal or supernormal or paranormal or something outside of the normal okay. when there's such common experiences as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, impressive uh, case in terms of, uh, for example, hearing noises, voice or, or dialogues, for, for example, auditory experience, probably because of their connotation of the schizophrenia and other psychosis are not usually experienced that nurses and caregivers may feel are um, normal. Uh, however, I heard several histories uh, associated with shared experience where more than one witness was hearing the voices. For example, um, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of uh, cases and accounts. Well, one night, uh, and Dutty, uh, along with uh, three fellow nurses, uh, we were completing the patient's daily charts when everyone clearly heard the voice of a girl who was calling. It was very vivid and real. The most surprising um, uh, things was that it was a service of, for adults and children are not prohibited from, from entering. Um, uh, also, they may not be voices. Other type of noises or sounds, for example, are also common, such as uh, applauses, moans, breaths, blows in, in the rapping style of sense. Uh, something like raps or, or tapping that seems to come from something or someone trying to communicate, right? Uh, raps with intelligence. Uh, for example, uh, on another occasion, after uh, a nurse had just uh, gone to work at night in the hospital, th this experience was in 1977. Uh, she, saw, she told us, uh, I heard that uh, on the upper floor, somebody was beating their hands, dragging their feet, and using a cane. When I went up to, the, uh, to see who was making the noise, I couldn't find anyone. I asked the nurse who was with me, and she was. Uh, she confirmed that it was not unusual to hear such sounds. Uh, another home caretaker reports that one night. Um, I was uh, walking around the room, looking in uh, patients with uh, hemorrhagic stroke, uh, who were unconscious, uh, unconscious, and who ordinarily did not make any sound. Hearing them call me by this name, it this happened even for none of uh, them actually knew my my name. Uh, and another nurse uh, in the hospital. Uh, told me that in the office we heard clearly the voice of a woman scream, screaming and crying, my son, my son. But when checked, nobody was there. Um, this is a, uh, there is a, a post-sensorial experience in terms of smell, touch, uh, feelings of presence and so on, right? Definitely. And we were uh, just saying how consistent this data is that you've gathered with so many um, other reports of spontaneous cases in terms of the type of experience, who sees them, how they go to investigate and so on. Um, one of our, Lisa uh, 
one of the attendees had asked when you were talking about empathy that there it's interesting about the connection of empathy and religious uh, religiosity or some sort of belief could this translate to a belief if after death um or uh, you know if are people who are very empathetic do they also tend to believe in an afterlife or no well empathy is a very common experience let me um let me show you um one of the most important things just one few seconds Yeah, um, uh, well, uh, characteristic of nurses in their empathic capacity, that is their sensitivity to an understand of the mental state of others, that can also facilitate uh, listening to such experience from uh, their patients on their own college. Um, the, the term empathy has been used to refer to two related human skills, the taking of a mental perspective and the various exchange of emotions. Um, some studies indicate association among uh, nurses, uh, in, in, uh, nurses' empathy, fatigue and, and depression, and uh, some researchers noted that emotional empathy interaction with patients improved job satisfaction for nurses. However, although empathy is one of the most important dimensions in, in patient's care, uh, no studies on the possible relationship between nurse uh, empathy and anomalous experience have been carried out. Um, for example, uh, Individuals in the general population uh, who had paranormal experience had been determined to show greater empathy in the sense that people who claim to have had such experience seems to have others for um, healing on, or therapeutic touch and around some, some uh, premonition experience. And in addition, a number of uh, anomalous paranormal experience seems to be related to, uh, sometimes confused with empathy uh, when they involve interpersonal traits, uh, for, for example, extrasensory experiences, as opposed to intrapersonal characteristics, for, for example, um, out of body experience, premonitions, memories of past life, uh, or mystical experience. Maybe empathy works like a telepathic experience in nature as a form of reinforcement and in fact many empathic people appear to accept that to some to some degree they are sensitive for others um, uh, in the in, in our study um, also nurses who had a uh, anomalous experience did not show the greater work stress a certain level of depersonalization differentiate differentiate them from the other control group and uh, empathy in that case was uh, um, a second predictor after uh, absorption uh, in the uh, sensitive nurse uh, profile uh, because we think um, empathy may be beneficial to cognitive style association associated with the paranormal experience and an additional reasons uh, with uh, why nurses are more effective and more receptive to hearing such stories than other medical personnel i think that's a really good point to make and that certainly lines up with other research on the way people connect to each other 
Um, Patricia was asking the opposite. I wonder if the lack of belief causes people to dismiss or block out experiences that don't fit their worldview. Their mind can't process it, so they ignore it or explain it away, then claim they've never had a paranormal experience. And I think that's that's also evidence in the literature as well, that there's a, you know, the whole sheep versus goat kind of thing that Margaret was mentioning. But I love the idea that what you've got here is not only an environment that is full of emotion laden experiences for the families, the person who is ill and the uh, nursing staff. So it, it, and for the nurses to be effective, as you were saying, they need to be empathetic. They need to have empathy to do their jobs very well. So it's quite an it's quite a fertile ground um, for finding these connections between uh, empathy and the ability to have or share what seems to be a, a, a paranormal experience. So I think I think those are really good points that you're making there, Alejandro. Yeah, of course. Um, it, um, I think empathy and, um, for example, um, I think I remember the Fenwick classified the experience of uh, many nurses in two distinct categories. For example, transpersonal and final meaning uh, in terms of transpersonal experience have a mundian uh, or transcendent qualities that cannot be easily explained by the pathological process of, of dying. They are characterized by that by visions, for example, uh, such as uh, following, um, so, such as the following disease relative who came to look for the disease to take him or her away, uh, and dreams featuring disease relatives or pets that help the patient die, the ability to travel to and from other realities before dying a coincidence that occur around the time of death, the appearance of the dying person to a close relative or, um, or friends who is uh, not physically present, and, and, and phenomena that occur around the time of death, as watches that stop at the time of death, so strange behavior in, in, the, in the domestic animals or lights and equipment that turn on and off without apparent cause. Uh, the experience of the final significance is very important for us. Uh, on the other hand, seems to have more substantive qualities uh, based on the here and now. And this may be brought about by what conditions, uh, the decision of the dying person to dispose of unresolved issues and thus be able to die in peace. This is very important in terms of the, the empathy and uh, or the impulse to reconcile, uh, reconcile with members of the family. This is very uh, common experience in the uh, in the house, uh, the elderly house, for example. Or there are even cases where a patient managed to stay alive. Uh, until a particular relative arrives to say goodbye, uh, or a patient in a confused or semi-conscious state reach uh, a brief state of lucidity, uh, lucidity that allows him to her to say goodbye and then pass away. Um, this is a very common experience. For example, um, we we collect a number of experiences that such experiences are healing because they are part of the dying process and can contribute to improving the practice of in, in, incorporating a spiritual approach of the end of life. Um, during the, the last years uh, of life or, or weeks or days of life, some dying individuals feel the need to reconcile with their relatives eliminated by disputes. Uh, this experience is considered to be uh, an extremely important process that helps them resolve internal conflicts so that they are freed from anxious 
anxiety and uh, can die peacefully and die peacefully um it is time when they can recognize the strong feelings of love and acceptance both on the part of themselves and their relatives yeah i think that's one of the reasons why it's such a fertile ground um uh adelson was saying uh, do you believe that nurses in argentina feel more open to talk about their unusual experiences than nurses in other countries i don't know exactly um probably um this year uh, we are um, following research projects in mexico and in spain uh, in similar characteristics of our research project uh, in hospitals in Mexico, district of Mexico, uh, from a, a Mexican nurse who are very impressed with our research. And in Spain, we started the research from the spirituality branch of the Palliative Institute uh, who recall this kind of experience and uh, we are waiting to uh, collect this kind of experience in order to uh, compare with our own results of course that's exciting that's going to be a a, a good good study um patrick was asking uh, are these kinds of connections empathy and psychic experiences um seen in in real life or seen in outside of the hospital um and can the personality traits of the nurses be found outside of the hospital as well yeah um um let, let me let me uh i i i'm search uh an experience because let me one second well it, it, it's interesting to know that seven of the 39 nurses in our first study also said that they had had uh, they had experience outside the hospital settings which supports the, the hypothesis that such psychic sensitivity may manifest both inside and outside of that arena um, in that case, cognitive style may be important uh, than ability or, or frequency, as in the case of, of absorption, but it does not necessarily mean that all these experiences are pure hallucinatory fantasies. Uh, for example, significant differences were found in absorption and propensity to hallucination in nerves of the night shift, for example. But, um, uh, for example, outside of ex outside of uh, hospital settings, the, the sensation of presence uh, or sense of presence, uh, that feeling that one is not alone, the, the speed being certain that there really is not one else around, is usually associated with the atmosphere caused by feelings of loneliness and isolation presented in the context that triggers, initiates, and configures such experience, which is also associated with sleep paralysis, for example, a state of involuntary immobility, that occurs before a sleep, uh, hypnagogic uh, image, or immediately after awakening, uh, for example, the hypnopompic image. And during this uh, state, vision may be uh, experienced and fleeting but vivid in different sensory uh, modalities. Um, I think, uh, um, for example, let me show you. For example, an another patient told me, uh, told her in, in nurse dreams where she encountered her deceased mother talking to her in a beautiful garden, uh, telling her that everything will be fine. It was comforting.
and uh, uh, she wanted to go back to the sleep because her mother would return. Another patient who had uh, dreams of visit friends uh, and relatives as well as uh, living people also said that everyone um, was telling me that I would be fine, that uh, there was nothing to fear. Still, another patient dreamed of his mother who had died when he was a child. The dream was so vivid that I could feel her perfume in her, her voice, but calmly uh, saying, I, I love you, something like this. Um, this kind of experience sometimes occur outside the hospital context and uh, not only in the, in the hospital setting. Uh, for that, nursing experience is very, uh, the, um, sorry, the um, nursing profile, the sensitive profile, uh, it's very uh, um, profile, uh, not only in the nurses, but in the person who had, uh, of the uh, woman or men who had uh, experienced this kind of paranormal events. Do you understand? Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, we are uh, at two hours and 15 minutes at this point. So yeah. um, I'm thinking we need to uh, round this up. Does anybody have any more questions or comments they want to put to uh, Dr. Para? Outside yeah. of the fact that people are saying, this was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I agree with that as well. Fantastic, gracias. De nada. <laughs> Un gran placer haber contribuido a este... Fantastic chat. Ah, gracias, gracias. Wait till you see the chat log. I'll send it to you. It's fantastic. Yeah, very good. Thank good, you. good. Well, um, thank you so much, Alejandro, for a wonderful talk as, again. And thank you so much for your um, willingness to always participate with Carlos and I. We uh, very much appreciate the hard work you do on our behalf. And... Um, so thank you everybody who's come today and thank you again, uh, uh, Alejandro. And hopefully we'll see all you guys soon. Let me get back to it, letting you know what's up next. Next weekend is uh, Dr. Alexander Morera Almeida, who will be talking about, oh my goodness, mind, body, independence and survival of death. I even ran the spell check on that. And that's next Saturday, May 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then on Sunday, May 12th, we'll have Dr. Michael Nam, who will be talking about terminal lucidity, the unexpected return of mental clarity before death. And that'll be Sunday, May 12th at noon Eastern. After that, we'll only have one more presentation um, and a discussion forum um, uh, the weekend of the 19th of May. So next weekend is Dr. Al Morera Almeida and Dr. Michael Nam, and we'll continue on with the topic. So thank you everybody so much and thank you Alejandro and everybody have a great evening, morning, afternoon, whatever's left of your day. Bye now. Bye-bye.